you know, uh, the biggest change that we have seen over the last maybe three years has been that we have two agents that have shown survival improvement in the second line of space. So most patients who develop advanced kidney cancer have now over six, seven, eight lines of therapy. And the bigger question for us clinically has been, which is the frontline treatment and how do you sequence the patients with the treatments that we have, right? We know that probably around 60% of patients who go from frontline therapy develop disease progression, move on to second line therapy. But we also know that when you go from second to third line therapy, you drop a lot of patients because of mortality. So around 20 to 25% of patients, maybe up to 30% of patients can actually go to third line therapy. So the question for us historically has been, which is the best first line treatment? And historically has been the utilization of agents that are able to disrupt vascular supply, what we call the tyrosine kinase inhibitors that basically block what we call KDR, which is the receptor two for the vascular endothelial growth factor, which is an agent that basically a factor that promotes angiogenesis. So sunitinib and pazopinib historically since 2005 and 2009 have become sort of the standard frontline agents of choice. When people progress, then the bigger question was what to do for those patients. Only two agents in the second line of space have demonstrated survival benefit. One is called cabosantinib, which is a CMET dual with uh, a KDR inhibition. Uh, in the meteor data, so survival improvement, delaying in progression-free survival, and response rate, what we call the trifecta effect. And then the, uh, an agent called nivolumab, which is a PD-1 inhibitor, also with survival benefit, not a PFS improvement because immune oncology agents don't really lead to uh, PFS improvement, but also a response rate that is quite uh, uh, robust. Those two trials, one is called, is called Checkmate 25 for nivolumab, and the second one is called the Meteor data for cabosantinib, reshaped the second line of space for uh, advanced disease. Uh, we didn't know which is the agent to use in the second line, but those were the two agents that have shown survival improvement in the second line of space. I think most of us, at least in the United States, uh, we're actually using adopting nivolumab just by virtue of the side effect profile of this agent compared with cabosantinib. But both agents were actually agents that were approved in that space. What has changed for us drastically over the last you know, 18 months or so is the utilization of immune oncology agents in the frontline space for patients with untreated metastatic RCC. Specifically, we're talking about patients uh, with the most common histology, uh, which is called clear cell carcinoma, clear cell RCC. So epinevo, epilumumab is a CTLA-4 inhibitor, nivolumab is a PD-1 inhibitor. The combination of epilumumab and nivolumab followed by maintenance nivolumab has become the standard of care for men with untreated clear cell metastatic renal cell carcinoma. But specifically for a small, for a big subset of patients, excuse me, looking at patients with intermediate or poor risk features, which are features of your disease that would predict how likely you're gonna do well over time. Uh, so that is the standard of care right now in the United States for patients with you know, metastatic disease. Recently, you know, Tom Powell from the UK, along with Brian Rini, uh, called it, uh, a trial called uh, looking at pembrolizumab, which is a PD-1 inhibitor in combination with a VEGF inhibitor uh, called axitinib, and they compared that regimen against sunitinib in the frontline space, similar to what Checkmate 214 comparing epinevo against sunitinib. And this data also demonstrates significant improvement in survival for those patients who receive Pembro and Axitinib combination over Sunitinib. So now, although Pembro Axis is not approved, and I don't have vested interest in whether or not it's gonna get approved or not, one would predict that the new standard of care for advanced untreated disease is going to be either epinevo or pembroaxi. So the bigger question that we're gonna face in the field is which out of those two regimens one will use. Uh, since the epinevo approval, in, at least in the United States, was for intermediate and poor risk patients, I would argue that that remains the standard of care. But the pembroaxi data challenged that data because the pembroaxi was for all comers, and if indeed it's approved, my prediction again will be that it will be approved for all comers with untreated disease. So it's gonna be between epinevo or pembroaxi. Uh, we have never compared them head to head, so it's gonna be a clinical decision based upon the patient that you have in front of you and also based upon what is the perception of the clinician as to which is the regimen that pro will provide the best benefit with the least side effect profile. 
I think one of the challenges in renal cell carcinoma right now for us is that we continue to rely on very obsolete clinical features because we haven't been able to pin down a biomarker, a molecular biomarker that we can use to predict response. So at this point, uh, in the absence of that biomarker-driven approach, we continue to actually utilize our clinical features. Uh, I think that is a big change in renal cell carcinoma that we challenge not only how you see the patients, how you treat them at front, but more important than that, it will leave a big vacuum as to which is the best second agent of choice to use if you got those two regimens as a frontline treatment. Mm -hmm.